Welcome to the multi-site How to Validate Your Data and Correct Your Data training module. Welcome to How to Validate Your Site. I'm going to make the assumption that your site has been set up by yourself or by someone else. Before you start beginning to use your site, you should carefully check all of your data to make sure it is accurate. To help you validate your data, there are a series of reports I would like you to run to check out, and the regional managers may find that there are some some uh, reports that are more beneficial to them uh, than the property managers, but the property managers also have many reports that they can run. Now, look on the left side of your screen, there's the sidebar. I have already clicked the reports group, and now we're looking at all reports. I'm going to click it and open up the other uh, reports. All right, this shows a list of available reports in this grid. On the right hand side, you see a box that says preview in a all enclosed reports. I'm going to click the all. Now, this form pops up and says enter parameter values. Right under that form heading, it says property manager. And then underneath that, it says enter property manager or all. Now, all of the crystal reports will have one or more tabs. It's, common, it's a common mistake to miss the second tab. We'll get into that a little later. I'm going to accept all. This is the crystal report form. Let's talk about this form. At the top, the form caption tells you which module and which report you have chosen to launch. Underneath that is a toolbar. Let's talk about the buttons on that toolbar. The very far left button is a red X. That is how you exit this crystal report. Just to the right of that are the navigation buttons. If this report had more than one page, those would be enabled and you could use the arrows to go down a page or up a page. To the right of that is a printer icon. You press that icon and it will print the report. Next to that icon is a little printer toolbar. If you choose that, it will let you change the printer. Just to the right of that is a little envelope. That's export. You'll be able to send uh, this report by email, for example. Just to the right of that is a viewing zoom bar. Press the drop-down list to see different levels of zoom. The remaining reports that you're going to print out for this validation series is located in the tenants module. Let's press the T at the top and go directly to the tenants module. We are going to print out the report rent roll by day. It is located in the group sidebar reports. It is an individual icon. Let's launch this report. The rent roll by day form pops up. It is defaulted with the current effective date. However, you may choose whichever ending date you wish. If you're satisfied with the date, press the Select Sites button. Now, I can select one or more sites. I can hold down the Control key and turn on and off the ones I want to see. Or I can hold down the Shift key and I can do a group of them and hold down the control key to not see the ones I want to print. Now I just said OK. It's going to calculate here for a little while. The rent roll by day report pops up. Look at the navigation bar. There's 33 pages in this example. We could flip through the pages by clicking on those navigation buttons. To print this report, push the printer icon in the toolbar. When you press the printer button, the print dialog box opens. There are some things you should note. First, the printer that it's going to print to. And then secondly, you have the choice of printing all pages or pages from a series. Press the OK button and the report will print. Now comes the fun part. Changing the data that you found that was in error from your data validation step. 
There are only two general areas that you can edit data directly in multi-site, and of course, there are some exceptions. They are the edit form from the two-column grid and in certifications. Now, it is very important to note that if your property uses certifications, all data that would show up on that certification should only be edited in the certification because the certification table updates the tenant records and the lease records as well as the certification record. Let's proceed. We began this training module by printing some reports from the site module. And here we are now in the site module. And let's start editing some data. First, I'm going to get focus on my rent tax credit. Then I'm going to double click. This brings us into what we call the two column view. Now on the left side, there are the fields, the field names. And on the right side is the current value in that in each field. Now, some fields are dependent on data from other tables. And these fields are protected, and you will not be able to edit the data. An example would be try to change the site number for a property. I'm going to get focus on site number, and I'm going to double click. A little pop-up comes up, says cannot change site number. I press OK. Now let's change the telephone number. I get focus on the telephone number field. See the little arrow that drops down there? I'm going to double click and opens up the editing form. This is the same form that will always be launched from every module every time you double click on a field from the two column view. All I have to do now is type in the new telephone number and press enter. Or I could have hit the OK button. We are now returned to the two column view and we can see that the telephone number has indeed been changed. The rest of the data that we are going to edit is in the tenant module. Let's press the T at the top of the form and go directly to the tenants. We are looking at the units view of my play site. Let's change some data on Hugh Banker. First, let's get focus on Hugh Banker and then double click. Now we see the two column view. Let's change his greeting. I go down, click on the greeting field, I double click, I type Mr. and then press the OK button. We are returned to the two column view and we can see the greeting has now been changed to Mr. Now let's edit something in the lease field. I'm going to right click over the main grid and I'm going to go down here to where it says lease. I click on that and we again are at the two column view. Notice the panel at the top. It says all lease fields. Now we have to be careful. Some of these fields might be on a certification and we do not want to change anything that is on a certification. Let's change. Uh, let's see. What should we change now? Late notice. I'm going to click on the late notice and then double click. I chose to edit this late notice field because it is a true false field. And I'm going to take this opportunity to describe parts of this edit form since you might be using it a lot. Of course, at the top of the form caption, it says editing late notice field. Underneath that, it says existing late notice value, which is true. That's just in case you've forgotten what it was. Now, the new late notice value is for you to enter. Notice right underneath that it says data type field equals true false. Enter T or small t or F or Y or true false. You can enter that and then hit OK. Let's turn our attention to the three buttons at the bottom of the form. The OK, the browse, and the cancel. The OK and cancel buttons are very apparent to what they do. The browse button will return a sampling of what is in the database. Use this button to see a representative sample of the database to make sure that the field that you've chosen to edit is just what you think it is. 
the first 100 records will be displayed in the Browse box just to the left of the OK button. This training module is now over. We hope that you now have some basic skills to help you edit your data. And remember, please, if your property uses certifications, all data that would be on the certification form should only be edited in that certification. I wish you good luck and enjoy. Thank you for watching.